two hour drive from our house, maybe 120 miles or so. And we're gonna visit Black Ops Auto Pro Moth. And specifically, going to look at the progress made on my 1971 280SE. Uh, mechanical fuel injection car, obviously, with a um, four speed manual transmission. I'm going to visit him in my 1984 300 turbo diesel and on the way we're going to stop off in Charlottesville and pick up my good friend Mark Harris who's also a vintage car enthusiast he's an MG Jaguar guy uh, but he's always up for an interesting little road trip like this to see something he has never seen before so we'll continue our way uh, to Charlottesville skies are kind of dramatic February day 2023 and if you remember if you saw that first video where I took the W108 to moths it's all about getting the exterior up to the condition of the interior and this car is going to it's undergoing a complete preparation of the bodywork any problems that he has found that sort of thing as if the car was going to be painted doors off fenders off hood off trunk off door panels removed glass out that sort of thing for a vinyl wrap job He's also done some mechanical work for me that he discovered, uh, such as some engine leaks and a transmission leak, a differential leak that he fixed. And I also got some new tires through him and from him, and he mounted them and balanced them. And then he will also uh, do an alignment on it if that hasn't already been done. So the purpose of this trip really is to see what has been done so far and uh, catch up on payment. I owe him some money. I haven't paid him anything so far uh, and um, my anticipation is that uh, of course most of the cost of this job is going to be in the preparation work um, and the vinyl itself will be a fraction of the cost of actual painting and also even though it takes a lot of skill to put down the vinyl in a, in a correct way and you know one continuous sheet uh, per car section um, it is much more forgiving uh, than painting so anyway my friend Mark Harris has expressed interest in seeing Moss shop and also this process and uh, so therefore this visit Moth also provides a very nice service where he'll come and pick up your car as well as uh, deliver it and so he's hundred and twenty something miles away 120 130 miles away so he came out here with his truck and trailer and picked up my white car and took it to his shop I think he did that back in um, I don't remember uh, September I think maybe you no know, October around there somewhere um, it was after I had a visit to his shop to really see what he was up to and I was quite impressed with what I saw and he visited my place to see what I was up to and liked what he saw too. Moth has expressed interest in getting into vintage cars right now his experience in terms of doing what he's doing cosmetics and things like that are with um, newer cars so this is a new experience for both of us and of course the reason that I'm having him do this is I it's just very difficult to find a body shop that will do the kind of work I want <laughs> and it seems like in my lifetime uh, waiting lists can be four five six years down the road for a good quality paint and I don't mean just a respray that's just a waste of time and money in my opinion but anyway uh, so we're getting ready to come up on a on a big highway up here we'll get on the interstate and the next stop will be Charlottesville to pick up my friend Mark on our way to Moth's Black Ops Auto Pro.
Well, we arrived and look over there. There's Mark and Ma. <laughs> oh, yeah. I better get over here. Yeah. Look at you looking sharp as always. Hey. I, I leave a trail, that's right. I love it. Just Mark dressed me before I... Doing? Yeah, I'm doing okay. How's your drive up? It was nice. It was very <laughs> windy. But uh, once we got uh, east of Blue Ridge, the wind... Well, actually, east of Charlottesville, east the wind Charles. died down. That's Those awesome. look very familiar. <sighs> They're off of a Mercedes. Yeah. That was the one that <laughs> well, crashed, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, yeah I had an accident. All right, look at that. Yeah, this is kind of cool. You get to see all the... When it was repainted... Uh, whoever painted it forever ago uh, just didn't take uh, extra yeah. steps to take off all the trim sure. pieces. So behind all of the trim uh, uh, was starting to rust. Ah. So you can see on the other one I'm working on, all the rust yeah. was just knocked off. Thankfully, it's not rusted to the point where you know it needs to be uh, um, uh, fixed or cut out. It's just on the surface, so that's really nice. That's good. <clears throat> yep, and all around the, the uh, headlight housing, I'm get all in here. So You could see where this could turn into something serious yep. one day. Yep. Wouldn't take much, would it? Mm -mm, not at Sitting all. Sitting outside or whatever. Mm -hmm. That looks yep. like, yeah. Well, that's starting to bubble yeah, up. Yeah, it really is. So, but that, I'll just sand it down really, really, really good. And I'll just mm -hmm. uh, fill it back in and, and trace that body line. So You got a haircut. I did. I got a haircut. You should have seen my beard. I was growing this beard out, Ken. It was getting, oh. it was getting rough. Okay. I thought I'm just going to do what you're doing and just grow out my mustache. Did you have a few complaints, did you? No, it's just it's starting to get itchy. All right. All it's right. starting to get itchy, you know? But I'm waiting for a customer real quick just to... Well, yeah. Back, and then we'll go inside and talk about... Of course. While we're out here, uh, how, how, how did that do on the way here? Beautifully. God, I love yeah, I do too. Uh, 30, 32 miles a gallon at 75 miles an hour, all the way down. It's such a, uh, it's such a 90s feel with the uh, uh, yellow fogs. Oh, right. It's an 84. I love it. It's, I love an, it's, it. it's an 84 though. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Really cool. I hear you're you're a Jag guy. Well, I'm, I'm really an MG guy. Are I you? just happen to have a Jaguar and a few this other is things. This my baby right here. You, you were saying that, awesome. uh, of course, I know the car, my car you're working on, mm -hmm. um, you're undercoating it. I am. Uh, and what you're doing is you're removing the old undercoat that's cracked, mm -hmm. which would allow moisture in and pro pop and perhaps do damage. So this is kind of a preemptive thing. That's correct. You're taking it off and you're putting undercoating back on it. And you were saying that this is what you're doing to this pickup truck. Yep. So I did this a little bit uh, a while back, but I guess this is a good uh, idea of what to expect once it's done on yours. But I mean, if you look, you kind of see it really good on the back. All right. Just because there's so much. Look under the wheel. Well, the leaf springs, the frame. Oh, I see. You know, everything. Um, I mean, so before it was had a ton of surface mm -hmm. rust. Nothing mm -hmm. serious. It had a little bit on the frame that was a little concerning. I just cut out and uh, mm -hmm. uh, welded back, sanded it down and covered it. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a really, really nice outcome. It just shows you how clean it mm -hmm. gets in and it protects it. And Ken, mm -hmm. like I was telling you before, this isn't paint. It's a rubberized oh. coating. So if you get too close with the power washer, it'll take the coating off. Oh, okay. So this not only, you know, it's not paint, mm -hmm. it just protects it mm -hmm. and makes sure that it doesn't go back to looking like rust or it allows any moisture to just get in. Spray it. Okay. Can you tell so far uh, how many times you think this car has been, let's not use the word paint, it's been resprayed, which is a whole different thing, right? Mm -hmm. So how many times do you think it's been gone at? Three times. Okay. Yep. Without a um, doubt. Yep. And the only way you could really tell, um, can't really see it because I took down this a lot. Usually when you start sanding it down, you'll almost see like a transition between this white and oh, a different yeah, yeah. white and uh -huh. a different white and a different white until you get to the primer or, or mm -hmm. the actual steel or, you know what I mean? Just you, you completely remove everything mm -hmm. in there. Um, I think you can actually kind of tell. Um, So you can kind of, if you get really close here, you can kind of tell that it's different whites. Like if you go from... The, I can see that. You, yeah, you can kind of see it's a different white. Even what's on, underneath here. So what this white and the white underneath the the, the, um, the rust is different. 
Oh. That's different paint. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. yeah. So some areas might have three sprays. Mm -hmm. Some areas might have one. Mm -hmm. Some areas might have four. Some areas might have two. Oh, okay. You understand? Okay. It all depends on if every single time it was sprayed, that person took everything off, then we put everything. Ah, okay. But nowadays, a lot of quicker shops, they don't take the time to take everything off. They're scared they might break something. <laughs> They don't have the time. They're just trying to pump it out yeah. and get it out tomorrow. See, I ran into that um, with the shop I talked to up in Harrisonburg, Virginia, where they were telling me, you know, uh, I, I, you, know you, you want this car repainted, and we're going to tell you right now it's going to be a minimum of fifteen thousand dollars because we don't know if we can get get the get your strips off, your chrome strips yeah. off. We might break the fasteners, yeah. and where do you even find them, and all yeah. this kind of stuff. And yeah. I, I thought in the back of my head all right i'm in the wrong place here yep. yeah yeah i mean that's some i think that's uh i have a lot of friends a lot of co-workers or a lot of people that i know that you know work at other places and it's a mentality thing my mentality is if i break it i'm gonna figure out a way nothing for me thanks i might i might I'm want so excited for you to see my car done yeah last time you came it was not done no let me just kind of walk up on the on the old girl here. Okay. This was my first leather swap seven years ago. So instead of getting rid of it as a four, I don't want to see that. Yeah, that's cool. It's cool saying that how the the roll works, how the time works. Yeah, here she is, Ken. Wow. What do you think? Well, I think that seeing it apart like this impresses on me what a really cool car it actually is. It's an incredible car, and they were 1,000% ahead of their time. They were so ahead of their game, they don't they didn't even know it, you know? I think it's it's so cool seeing how thin um, the some of the panels are pressed in together. And, Oh. I mean, it's it's how they we're still doing stuff nowadays, yeah. you know. And they've done it such at a, a, a great pace. And I feel like back in the day, a lot of the panels are so much bigger. Yeah, it's so cool that they were able to find a way to make it bigger. Nowadays, it's like your fender has thirty pieces, you yeah. know, behind it. It's wild. But this is cool, Ken, because you get to see a lot of what's behind all of the body, right? Oh, yeah. So a big thing for me that I'm just going to spend some serious time on is your fenders going into your engine compartment. A lot of rust right here. Mm. It's very, very weak. So mm. oh, yeah, if I come in here and start nicking it, it's just going to, you know, the other side, I could just push through it. Um, so what I'm going to do is take this down as much as I possibly can, and I'm probably going to reinforce it. Just get too thin, I don't know, if it's gonna be aluminum, um, what I'm gonna do here exactly, and I'll just weld a whole new sheet yeah. right behind it just to make it a lot stronger. This is what holds your fenders. So your yeah. fenders go in, it slides right underneath of the, uh, this firewall area, right inside, and then it just clamps. And it just, there's a, it goes right in. So and that's it. That's literally what holds your fender. You don't want that to break off. There goes you don't your want to, and it's yeah. it's one of those things yeah. again. A lot of places would see that, and they'll just keep rolling. They'll yeah. throw everything back in, and they'll you know they'll spray undercoating right on top. I'm trying to get. I'm removing all of this as much as mm. possible. Just how I'm sanding your your body parts. I'm gonna sand the inside of this before I I uh, undercoat it. And you'll take a, a wire brush. You know, get in here and just brush the crap out of this. All this, work. I mean, you can see it's not, it's not that bad. You know, this is actually, it's unbelievable how clean this car is underneath. Mm -hmm. You would think, um, I mean, I, I deal with car, early 2000 cars that you're like, holy shit. Yeah. And you look at something like this, you're like, wow, this yeah. is a 70. Like, this old and this, you know, and it's good. And they just, and the texture, the way they built things back in the day is just was serious, you know? And as far as you can tell, is this the first time this fender has been off? Uh, yes, 100%. Um, the doors too, you reckon? Yep, I think so. so yes, 100%. And I'll, that's a great question. I'll tell you why I can right here. So if everything was left on the car and it was sprayed, 
you're gonna get uh, areas where it's gonna drop from the door to the uh, uh, um, frame or uh, to a different part. It's gonna kind of drip. And that's exactly what happened right here. Oh, um, you kind of see it right here. I different. can see. Yep, they just yep. opened the door up and just sprayed it. And they were too heavy. Yeah. And they were probably running at a higher uh, pressure and it just sprayed too much and it just dripped down. And if you walk all the way around, it's, it's, uh, you can see it all over. So when all this is prepped, and it is as we discussed before, all of this preparation is, 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 should be no different than what a body shop would be doing uh, who is getting ready to paint the car. I would say it's, it's a much... But, but, but what you're getting ready to do and what you are doing is going to be much better than any of those folks would do. My question is, is that once you get all this prepped, Will this, there be vinyl in here? Uh, it's, it'll be primer. Oh, be primer. One hundred percent. Yes. Um, uh, so, because that's what you see. Get yeah, yeah. And then it's going to get primered, and I'll probably do uh, uh, um, a very light gray, something oh, look. pretty close. Look at that. All that will get cleaned up. That's that going. All... That's going through. Yep. All that will get fixed. Oh, that's a clip. That, that's a clip there hole you. or a weep hole. Yeah. Okay, it's not right a rust here. hole. Yeah. Yeah, right here. But um, yeah. So. Yes, it's. I would say what you're getting, Ken, is is more in depth than a lot of body shops would go nowadays. Um, and another thing I wanted to show you is if you had your door open and you're spraying, if you move this latch, you can see that they didn't <laughs> yeah. hit it at a different angle. Oh, I yeah. see. They just kept it at one angle, sprayed and kept it moving. Mm -hmm. So it's just the small little things that you, you pick up on when you do this, but. There's the my new tires. <laughs> Brand new tires. All the mechanical stuff are done besides your rotors and brakes. I think I have gotten four o orders so far of rotors and brakes and they're the wrong size. Oh. Wrong size, they keep getting them wrong. Uh, Mercedes-Benz has them, but they are an incredible 700 and something a rotor up front. Oh wow. I was Whoa. like, no thank you, which is crazy. Um, so I've just been uh, kind of going back and forth with a few vendors. Um, that's another reason why I haven't undercoated that yet, because mm -hmm. once I get the mechanical stuff done, power wash, then I'll spray it. Well, I appreciate you, your diligence in terms of yeah. being conscious in terms of the price of the parts and being able to look. But it's nice to know that if push comes to shove, they are available. They were 100% available, and they're just super expensive. Um, but those are the same tires I just had put on my uh, on the diesel out there. Yep. That's why oh, I was man. telling you yep. about them. I really like them. Great tires. They're, They're all season tire. Um, by general, general tire. Yeah, very, very, not very um, thick. They're very rubberized. So, you know, in a cold morning, they'll probably feel a little hard, but once they you do. warm them up, they feel great, you know? So, but the rear end is done. Drop the whole rear end. I'll have to, uh, I forgot to bring the USB from home, but. Oh. I told you once I deliver you the car, yeah. I'll give you a USB with a ton of pictures. Um, just the whole rear end was dropped, the, the, uh, uh, um, all the rings was all resealed, all the leaks were, were Oh, addressed. fantastic. Um, the transmission was dropped, um, <laughs> the, rear mare, the rear main bearing was replaced. Oh, um, really? Yeah, I think we agreed on that. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. I just forgot. Yep. That's yeah. a nice, to me, that's that's a <laughs> wonderful surprise. No, no, that's no. That's a great it's, surprise. That's a great surprise. And then what else did I do underneath of it? And then the, um, put all this back together, um, the uh, uh, valve cover, that's one um, gasket there. And then right before I undercut it, if you remember, Ken, I told you about those two areas um, on the driver's side. I do. Uh, that are one is pretty big, one is pretty small. Those I cut, cleaned it out with a uh, Dremel. Yeah. Just kept grinding, grinding, grinding until the uh, um, the surface was hard. Got rid of all the rust, and then I'll go in there and I'll just weld it. I'll sand that down, and then I'll then I'll spray it. Excellent. That way, once you get underneath of it, once you get it back, you won't see that hole. You see, I've never seen all this apart, so it's nice to see how good condition things are. Yeah, absolutely. And try to replace those. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm very. Uh, oh, you saw my. <laughs> your wire. You, you, you were able to figure that out and unplug it. I, excellent, excellent. Yeah. You see, I left plenty of wire there. You did, I appreciate it. <laughs> You're very thoughtful, Ken. <laughs> very thoughtful, but. It looks good. Have you, uh, 
Did you get a chance to light them up before you took them I apart? I did. Yeah. Love it. Don't they look love good? Love it. Love. I love it. I love your rear uh, reverse lights. You yes. You put uh, uh, LED. I did. Those are beautiful. Just to show you, Ken, how OCD. We deal with stuff like this. Again, what I do is I'm not off of a busy road. I do this stuff that for people like you that appreciate this stuff. But you know, here's everything that came off your HUD. Excellent. You know, here's everything that came off the doors. Yeah. You know, here's everything that came off the fenders. <laughs> You know, here's everything that came off the rear bumper. Uh, here's everything that came off the headlights. You know, everything you back, you zip tie. That way, you know what you're, you're know. missing. And before I reinstall these, um, I have acetone. You see that table over there? Yeah. With a bunch of those liquids. Oh. I have straight acetone. I will dip all of the hardware in them uh, for about a day, maybe 24 hours, and then the very next day, I'll put them in a. Um, Kind of like a finisher, just probably water, water and soap. And I'll have to show you that bucket. It will knock off 95% of the surface rust. It will almost look brand new uh, um, hardware. Excellent. So you have a beautiful car. All the panels are going to look brand freaking new. You can't put, you know, rusted uh -oh, hardware back on there. So you don't. Sandblasting, sand you, you could, that's a little much, I think, in my preference. Um, if you're using the right liquid, they'll take everything off. They'll strip it really, really nicely. Um, I get scared of sandblasting because if you get too close, you can mess up a lot of the threads. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? It depends on who's right. how you're doing it, but that, that's what I've always done. I've been pretty happy about that, but yes. Yeah, but that is the other can. thing. You can, I, just, I mean, because most people that I know that have pulled cars apart will, you know, will they have yep. a sand, little sandblaster yep. there. So this frame that's on this left, that whole frame, that's an 88 original frame. Mm -hmm. That was worse than anything that you've seen here so far. That was, that's the original frame. That whole thing I sandblasted. Sandblasted, treated the whole front end. I welded a new uh, uh, front end on it. And then uh, I primed that and then undercoated it. Do you uh, subcontracts uh, to somebody who comes in to sandblast? No. Nope. Uh, so there is a shop uh, a block away. Um, they're called Virginia Steel Specialties. Okay. They are my machine shop. Okay. Per se, say. Um, and anything I need, I go there and do it. So all of my welding stuff, all my steel stuff, aluminum, anything I need to weld, fabricate anything. <laughs> This is what he's talking about. He likes what I did with the LED backup lights and running lights. David, David Mark, he's an amazing person. Uh, he's actually the owner of all these warehouses here. And uh, me and him have just known each other for two years. Ah! Uh, and, I fell up. So, yep. and it's nice because it doesn't take up a lot of room here. Uh, I try to just keep the bare minimum that way everything's, you know, everything has a lot of distance. I don't like spray. A lot of, uh, you know, yeah, they didn't cover anything up a lot. So oh. this, I'll come in here with like paint thinner. Okay. Uh, before I put it back together. So if you use a little bit of paint thinner, it'll just knock that coloring right off. So say like an area where I'm not gonna wrap. You come in here and just scrub, 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 scrub. You gotta really let this warm up and keep going at it. Will knock that right off, especially on like the rubber yeah, areas. Yes. You see there how you go, take it's it going right off? Yeah. Yep. So yeah. we'll take that off. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, wiring insulation. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be so much better. <laughs> but this car has a killer air conditioning. I tell you that. It well, that's nice and chilly. Oh God, yeah. It puts out uh, 40 degrees at the vents. Wow. I've measured it because I charge it once a year. You know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, please. Yeah, so <laughs> everything is done besides the uh, rotors, just the brake system refresh, and the body work. So um, your tires were, were ordered, that's all good to go. Mount and install on the car. The engine oil leak has been resolved. There's two points of leaking. Um, those have been addressed. Transmission leak, that's been addressed. The rear differential leak, that's been addressed. You remember that coolant leak I told you about? That's been addressed. Uh, the rust holes have been cut, repaired, and then I'll finish that up when I undercoat it. So I want to make sure I do that only when I'm um, ready for that process. Yes. And then um, 
And that's it. Uh, pretty much the, the, all that's left is the body work and, and the, the, the brake stuff. So really excited about this is my, I'm happy we're at this stage. This is my favorite part. You know? I like, I, I think it looks really cool yeah. like this. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask you now about the doors. Mm -hmm. uh, we had discussed, uh, you, you, you were thinking about pulling the door cards off. Yep. And, and since you're pulling the door cards off, that exposes all the mechanicals, mm -hmm. clean and lubricate, mm -hmm. make sure that everything's working fine. And then I think I mentioned to you that these side vents are adjustable. Correct. You knew that. Yep. Little turnbuckle. Mm -hmm. There is a whistle, so yep. I think that's probably all it needs is yep. a little tightening yep. up. Um, and then the we talked about replacing any seals that were cracked and hard. And then uh, when the windshields all that will be replaced the swipes yep. yeah are so wipes, the reason uh, the doors will be the very very last thing i do so i'm going to do your fenders your hood and the car will be done and the door jams everything will be done and then i'll come back and do each door at a time mm. there's a lot of parts in one door and i don't want to take them all apart i want to do it at do one door finish the door, put everything back together, install it on the car and move forward. Okay. Um, just cause the panel's coming off, the windows are gonna come out, all the seals are gonna be replaced, the mirror's coming off, the door handles are coming off, uh, uh, um, the, uh, 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 the key uh, uh, ignition is gonna come off, everything, there's a lot of pieces back there are coming off. Um, and I'll sand that down, treat it, prime it, sand it down again, wrap it, wow. put everything back on, then it goes back on. Mm. So that's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a, it's, it's a lot of hours. It's a lot of door, hours yeah. and it's a lot per door. Yeah, you know, like yeah. when I did my doors, um, so I wrapped my car as well. I did the same thing. On, I wrapped the whole car. Mm -hmm. I did everything. And then, and then I, I did the doors last. Um, and then, you know, like my front bumper, I did that front bumper alone. Funny, funny point. So just the front bumper, right? Yeah. So. How many pieces do you think are in that front bumper? Uh, probably more than I would, I would say. I mean, There's about 37 yeah, pieces yeah. on that front bumper on my Mercedes. Wow. You got your bumper, you got all the covers, you got the fog light trim piece, you got the fog light, you got three grill bits, you have the reinforcement foam piece, you have uh, uh, oh, yeah. reinforcement bars on each side. There's a lot, you know? I don't like a lot of shops to do that and it's fine. And I think that's where a lot of mistakes or a lot of corners are cut. Cause it's, it's hard to remember, you know what I mean? I have like something called all data where, you know, if you're gonna go do something on a car, it tells you by the books per Mercedes, how to remove this fender, one step, you know, step one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. And people do it, they take it off. And then a few months later, they come back to put it on, on again and they forget how. Yeah. I like to take it off, I've been there. do it, yeah. goes back on. <laughs> I think we've all been there at one I, time. I want, we learn from our mistakes, <laughs> right? right? You don't want to go back there. That's right. It just it gives you a, a, a much cleaner finish, and it's so fresh in your head, you know? So, but yeah, all the chrome pieces are in great shape. Um, I told you I'm just going to polish, 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 polish. Um, a few of these pieces, I'm just doing personal research. They have a little bit of ding uh -huh. on some of them. All this cleans up really nicely. Are these stainless steel or aluminum? They're aluminum. Okay. Aluminum. Um, these can come, I mean, they clean up, uh, I can, but a few of them that has small little dings, I'm going to try to see if we can find a, a replacement. There's no way to fix this. No. There's no way to fix it. There's no way to fill it. So just rather replace it since we have it off. So if I find them, cool. If I don't, no big deal. Yeah, really. And besides, they did their job. Yep, 100%. Yep. <laughs> they did. They saved something. Yep. <laughs> That's right. That's good mistake number one, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, pretty cool. So, uh -huh. yeah. Um, what else can I tell you? But you saw the, the hoods back there. Um, everything on the, the rear end tail lights. I left those dropped right in it. That way I know where everything you, you goes. Know, one, one thing that I am a little concerned about, mm -hmm. um, and with white, it may not be such a big deal. Uh, but I've seen cars that have been partially done mm -hmm. and it look they look at you know rather than being an even sort of package mm -hmm. so with the white once it's wrapped it's gonna be gloss mm -hmm. and these are gonna be polished up as best as you can Correct. I guess white would be more forgiving against the old the old metal 
the, the old shiny bits mm -hmm. than black or blue Agreed. or correct okay yep. so yeah, you, you reckon we'll be okay in that department 100 percent. okay yeah you got nothing to worry about because i, I don't agree. mind things like um you know if, when you're polishing this out i don't think you'll find any uh but sometimes you find little cracks little little yeah. aging little mm -hmm. spots um like like kind of how this glass looks mm -hmm. there ain't nothing you can do about that glass no. just leave it be you know mm -hmm. it's just part of the car mm -hmm. yeah, um, you can make uh i wouldn't i would no uh, just leave it alone yeah yeah. Oh, yeah so it's a little cloudy yeah it gives a character yeah <laughs> like its owner its owner's a little cloudy <laughs> yeah this is really Boy, these yeah. doors are heavy they are oh my heavy. gosh they are heavy. on the plastic yeah they are heavy. and all this is going to be wrapped all this oh my god so yes very i very bet you the exciting. doors on my one two three out there are even heavier than these because they got they, so they got they got electric these are heavy these yeah. are heavy yeah and again just to point out my ocd and just my train of thought the only reason they're sitting up on the ground right now is because they're sitting on plastic yes the plastic will not scratch the bottoms will not damage it versus if they're right. sitting on concrete you'd have issues so I always make sure when something is sitting, it's sitting on a place that it's not going to damage, plus you. Or if it is going to sit on uh, uh, somewhere, it's going to sit on the steam. He, he needs all that he can get. All the blessing that right, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Oh, you're welcome. You're so welcome. <laughs> what are friends for, right? That's right. That's another direct uh, connection. <laughs> you, you'd be shocked. So it's not aggressive. It doesn't pull off a lot. This pulls up a little bit of the dry ice. Just it pulls cleans up. it up. So anything that's ever been sprayed on top, okay, it's going to take it back to what's really underneath. underneath. Okay. What's yeah? really underneath. And usually, usually that would be shocking. What's underneath? Right. You know what I mean? Usually it's unless it's a lot of rust, which I don't think is. Because if we had a lot of some serious rust issues here or any type of issues, it would obviously cause a, a leak anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, and you would know that and you just replace yeah. the line. So just for the sake of the video, we we're talking about these fuel rails mm -hmm. and, and everything all cadmium plated from the factory. Mm -hmm. And what you're suggesting is a first step to, is to see what's underneath there mm -hmm. by using uh, blasting it with dry ice and mm -hmm. see what it looks like when, 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 when it's cleaned up like that. Yep. And maybe some of that cadmium might be preserved under yep. there. Or what you'll end up getting is, is a much nicer patina rather than the spray on silver paint mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. which would actually, I think, would be prettier. Yep, I think so too. And these are steel. Yep. So steel would be mm -hmm. prone, you're, you're prone to rust. That. Yeah, and we could. Like I said, we can just do a small little sample area. Mm. You know what I mean? I'll, yeah. I'll cover it up really nicely. That way it doesn't hurt anything. And we'll hit it. Just take your time. That's all it is. All right. Yeah. And and of course, it, this just clean, yeah. clean right, it up. Clean just just clean it up. Right. I don't want it polished. Just clean. Yeah, it will be. Because they, they were never polished. 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. That looks stupid. <laughs> it really would. Yeah. Over once restoration. Once yeah, is, exactly. Of a lot. Once, yeah. yeah, once the car is done, Ken, obviously, I will spend a ton of time here. I'll probably come back and even <laughs> zip tie, clean up, move anything that's slightly loose, mm -hmm. anything that's like that. I'll, I'll come in here and clean it up for sure. Okay. And if I could, you know, I'll get, um, there's, I think I have some I can show you. All it is is, um, is plated uh, uh, harnesses plastic mm. where you know i can just come in here and probably wrap all the stuff and follow that hole and all you'll see is just oh. one. Oh, i know what you mean yep you know what i mean instead of seeing four or five wires you'll just see one yeah um just cover it up and that's what the newer stuff is mm -hmm. on wiring harnesses there's so many lines mm -hmm. it's just covered by a plastic cover it's all yeah. about looks yeah. you know all the small stuff i'll take the battery out and underneath yeah it. i'll vacuum underneath it it'll be a lot of trash it's all part of the process, baby. But it's getting there. The, fu the fun part is here, and I'm, I'm excited. It's like building a house, isn't it? All the time and all the waiting is in creating a good foundation. Foundation, that's and what everything else is built on. Yes. And then once, once the foundation is up, the rest of it kind of goes lickety split, and that's, that's the it. fun part. That's the exciting part. So, that's the color we're choosing. It's not exactly, but it's white, and I think I'll be happy with that.
Are you guys hungry? Yeah. 